Hello and welcome to another tutorial. I am Tom and my name on cables is Pandur and today I want to talk about HTML. HTML operators, CSS properties and so on. So you can not only do WebGL in cables but also HTML and this became a bit more convenient now with a few new HTML ops and I also want to show what we are currently developing and have a little preview on it. Okay. <clears throat> So let's start. So first of all, we, we, we still have the old diff element operator you probably know about. And this one is a bit clunky because you don't have all the options um, available uh, in the par as parameters. Um, you need, basically you need to use the CSS uh, operator or write CSS code. So we try to minimize that. I mean, CSS code is still <clears throat> very useful, but if you have a few elements that are, or if you have just one element, like you don't need CSS uh, to write CSS code because it's just this one custom element, or if you have mostly custom elements, then it's more easy to, to patch it because you don't have to reuse all the properties. So let's, let's try this. So we have this new <coughs> operator, sorry called element. So it's just called element. And the main difference is that it has this size input uh, and it has this width and height. So um, you see, we already see an, an outline here. So we wouldn't see this if you, um, so if we click it, we see this outline. This is also fairly new. So I can also click, um, uh, the O key, the, the overlay key, then it's turned off. So now I'm not seeing this anymore, but it's, it's really, it's really helpful. For example, with this element, because it doesn't show anything yet. So it's, it's quite great to know where it is and how big it is. So now we have this, this size input. Um, we still have the text input, so we can uh, put in some text here. Well, let me put in something longer, like a lorem ipsum. So now we have lorem ipsum there. And you see, because of the size limitation, uh, the text is cut off. And we now have this overflow parameter here. So you can say visible, then you see it will just overflow the element or hidden that that's the default setting or scroll and auto. So scroll will add scroll bars to both axes and auto will only add a scroll bar to one through the axis where it's, it's really needed. So we get this this vertical scroll here. So I can scroll through the text. Let's make this a little bit digger, uh, bigger, uh, like this. And yeah, so I have a nice text view and I can scroll through it and all of that with just one uh, operator. And you can still write the inline CSS, give it a CSS class, um, all that stuff. Um, so, okay. So now we added a few more operators for the most used CSS, pro CSS properties. So, um, for example, CSS, uh, so they are called element CSS, border, padding, transform, and so on. So let's try element CSS transform. So this one uh, will be connected to the element. And then I have a transform um, X and Y and I have a scaling, uh, even have a rotation, 2D rotation, and so on. So really handy to just move your, your operator around. Um, ah yeah. By the way, if, you, if I click this uh, operator, it will still highlight uh, this, this element because it is connected. And another cool trick, I don't know if this is well known. So if you press your control key and then hover, here and you hover over a diff element from cables, you will see it gets highlighted. And when I then release the control key and click this, you see it will go to the operator that's that's behind this uh, HTML element. So uh, if I have uh, if I have multiple elements like this, so you can see I can highlight this or this and then it will go to that operator. Super handy to find your ops based on what you see on the screen. You can just control and click there, it's super handy. 
Um, yeah, so we transformed our operator. So now we can also add uh, some padding. You see that there's a little border inside of our element here. So we added this border. Um, to make this visible, we can also use uh, element CSS color. And then we can set our text color and our background color. Um, yeah, so also we can add a nice border to the element. Border, um, you can say how thick it is and the color of it and the radius parameter, you can control how, how round it is. You can, you can even uh, make it really circular, uh, which is funny with the scroll bar, but uh, yes. So you have all those options available. Then there's also element CSS uh, font, um, which lets you set a font to the, and the size for the font. So you can make it really big um, for the element. So yeah, if you are missing any CSS properties, let us know and we will probably, probably add them. Ah oh, yeah, there's also, which is quite interesting, a, so we use the CSS transform, so I will delete this. And there's also element CSS 3D transform. So this lets you, gives you the possibility to even rotate uh, the elements. It, this is not basically in the WebGL main loop, but it's just like the CSS, CSS has 3D properties and it's just setting those and they will overlay with the, uh, with the normal um, cables WebGL, but it's not integrated. So they cannot, like 3D elements cannot overlap CSS 3D elements. They are always on top basically. Um, yeah, so so those are the new CSS op and um, the the new overlay mode where you can where you can click and see which element you are working on. So um, I also want to show a thing that was like many people had problems with it. So the CSS operator you could use assets in it, but it was kind of clunky and the asset weren't exported so well. So we, we changed the method to do this. So we added a, um, so we have already CSS variables in, in cable. So you can set a value to a variable and then use it in your CSS code, right? So, and we added now a, a CSS um, var variable URL. And this one lets you set a URL as a variable. And the handy thing is, that um, you can just use uh, like your assets. So let me just use the beach JPEG and set it as a CSS variable. And we let's, let's call it background image, BG image. And um, now I can go here and use CSS property. Uh, sorry, CSS property string and say background image. And then I can use the syntax for variables. Um, I always do this wrong. This is probably wrong. Yeah. So this is var parenthesis minus BG image and then the CSS uh, the, this element has the um, the beach as a background image. You cannot just see it because it's just a huge image, but there it is, you see. So that's really handy. So now if you export, this image will also be in the export because, because Cabots knows about it. Like we cannot just pass the CSS or, or we could, but this is not a good solution. So this way we know there's an operator using this image as a file input and then make, we can do all the magic when we export. So what we can also do is not use this as a CSS property string, but let's make the size like this again. We can use the CSS operator. So we could also say, um, give this element a CSS class like this. Um, 
my thing and then I can go here and say my thing. So with the dot, so, so CSS knows this is about the class, my thing, and then I can say uh, background image and then we use our variable again and then you see this the background image is now also set and this way you don't have to use this this operator you just have one um one element and uh has have the background image so that's really that's really useful and i think this is a good way to do this because variables in css variables are are really handy anyway so um you can do it this way um yeah so one other thing that i wanted to show is it's really handy so this is uh, uh still in development so as you see i am on the url dev.cables.gl so this means this version of cables is the one that we are currently developing on and this operator is is very new but i think it's super helpful and super useful so if you have lots of um operate like css elements on the screen and you want to align them or you want to to position them it's always like you have to position every element on its own right now which or like you can also put elements in another element and then then position them but then you have to think about uh, floating elements and all this kind of stuff so if you have like small navigation bars or icon bars or something like this or you just want to make a list of things and align them to each other basically um there i am developing a new op for this so this op is is very handy i think so let's create a second element set the text to second maybe uh, set some color the background color uh, whatever and so now I want to align this new div element to the other div element. So we, there is a new op called align element. So only on dev for now, but you can you can just test it. And so I the first connection is the parent element, and the second one is the element that I want to move around. So I connect this here. And now if you click the align element operator, you see. We have all those options here and so this is horizontal align and vertical align so if i change this the second element moves to the left or the center to the right and so on so it's always aligned to the extremes of the other element so um and the other one is basically like the pivot point for this element so the, the orientation the horizontal and vertical orientation so if i set this to left and top you see in this with this those buttons we set the point of the extreme so this this corner or this corner or this corner this corner or the center and with the other one we set the corner of this element so if they set it to right and bottom then it's basically inside of the parent element but in the right bottom so if i set this to left and top then i also have to select left and top here and then it's at the same left and top position so i have I really have fine control about where this thing, where the, the element is. So now it's in the cent it's centered in the center. If I want it to be aligned left and uh, top, then it's this is still the center and it's aligned here. So so this is this is really handy if you if you want to have um let's say this is also one hundred uh one hundred by one hundred and we align it um on the right top and then the second one is here and maybe we do another one um, like this set the color to something else and um, align this oh yeah so i want to align this to the second one so i can align it like this so now they are all aligned automatically right so if i have the second element and make this wider you see the 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 third element let's call this third element will also move so this is fantastic i think um this is super helpful and if i if i have the first element and i move this around they will all move together and i can also um 
scale scale this one and yeah w this way you can easily build like little menus or navigation or icon bars uh, stuff like this i think this will be super helpful and um will be in the next cable series but you can already try it out on dev cables gl um so do that and let us know uh in, on github or in the comments whatever um okay thank you very much see you around mm.